Hey guys, Daniel James here, and today we're going to be taking a look at uh, Cine Samples' uh, new library, which is Cine Winds uh, Pro. Uh, the way I'm going to do this video, if you haven't seen my other ones, is I've written a, uh, a short piece of music in the background, and um, what we'll do is take a listen to that, and then I'll dissect the track, and then show how I used uh, Cine Winds Pro uh, in the in the track, and we'll talk about all that good stuff. So uh, here we go. So there we go. There's the uh, the short track I wrote. And for those of you who uh, may have spotted that the uh, the wind sounds um, were very ethnic in this, and that's one of the big things about the library that I'll go into talking about. Um, so let's start at the beginning, as they say. What is Cinewind? Uh, Cinewind's Pro. So for those of you who saw my last Cinewind's video, it was called Cinewind's Core, and much in the same way that they did with their brass libraries, they um, they made uh, a core version first, which is like the, the basic instruments, like right here. So uh, like your basic instruments, the ones that are like almost essential, you know, to get you up and running with that uh, particular part of the orchestra. And then the pro is basically the um, the more, they're like the instruments that are not so common as the ones in core. And then like all the extras and, you know, all the, uh, the, the tasty little bit tasty. All the ta yeah, all the tasty little bits are in um, are in the pro version. Uh, so you could buy one without the other, and it would still work. Uh, like for example, in this track, I didn't use any Cinewinds Core. I, I just used the pro sounds. Um, so you can you can have one without the other, but they uh, the the good thing about them is they complement each other um, very well. I'll stop saying um in a minute. Um, so let's uh, take a look at the track. So. As you can hear, it was very uh, epic and ethnic. We'll dissect the track first, and if you wanted to hear what the patches sound like in isolation, I'll do that once we've dissected the track. So uh, the, the song starts. Let's take a listen. So it's on number four. I should really start naming things. It would make these videos so much easier. So number four, we have the border pipes. So I start off with a uh, you know a nice little drone, and you know, and I, I basically establish a a theme a melody you know and this this theme basically carries us you know for a minute and a half into the track so we'll just take a quick listen to it <sighs> uh... i mean <laughs> that goes on for a while so i won't do the whole thing so let's let's talk about a few things here so first off it is, uh, as you heard, you get a, a drone, a nice little uh, drone down at the bottom there. 
And if you, do, if you don't know how bagpipes work, basically they drone a note and then they... <laughs> then they do something a little bit better than that over the top. Um, so yeah, like I say, I, I established a theme and I did it very pentatonic, you know. Nice and simple melody. Um, yeah, so the first thing that, that popped out about this library that I, I actually really loved is that I don't have um, in my library, and I, I'm not sure of any alternatives, but in, in like my, you know, my palette, tool set, whatever you want to call it, in, in all my sample libraries, I didn't have any well-programmed ethnic instruments. And while this, while Cinewinds uh, Pro does have like some um, re some regular patches, let me just show you what they are. Uh, City Winds Pro. While it does have like alto flutes, English horns, you know, things you would find in an orchestra, it's also got this huge like ethnic section to it. And so I thought, being as though most people um, have seen like the official videos, you know, where they've run through all the, uh, uh, you know, all the, oh, we should probably shut the Skype down, um, where they run through all the, uh, uh, the the main orchestral sounds, you know, where they, where they go through them in a bit more depth. I, I, I imagine that not many people are going to show the ethnic thing, so uh, I thought I'd do it in this. So the first thing about ethnic instruments is there's hardly ever, uh, hardly any that have been recorded with, like, modern scripting techniques, you know, like legato, for example. So... I mean, like, they used to be like... Which doesn't sound very realistic. Um... So yeah, so I thought uh, so that's basic. This this uh, this one patch actually inspired the whole track because I just started like this, and then just played pentatonic until I found like a. Well, I'll tell the truth. I actually sang. I was like, da -da -da -da, and until I found a melody I liked, and then I recorded it down. Yeah. So yeah, I just, I just did all this. And one thing I want to mention about the uh, the, the border pipes is that they have, uh, there's quite a few actually in the, in the ethnic ones uh, that have this this kind of ornamented sustain. So um, they're, they're velocity controlled. So it, essentially what an ornamented uh, sustain is, is the, the attack of it will be like this kind of twiddly little, well, it's an ornament, but you know, if you don't know what it means by ornament, ornamented it's like a, a twiddly little note you know see i can't get this to to hit the low one's working and then <laughs> it's a little bit temperamental but um yeah, I can put them on the uh, on the key switch. You could do that, by the way, by clicking on these buttons here. So if you go to the the mapping, you can change how you uh, how you change it. So C one. Wait, that wasn't C one. Oh, damn it. I'm doing it all wrong. Well, I'm clearly doing something wrong here, rather than spend time dwelling on it. Let's move on, shall we? Let's pretend that never happened. So, uh, in the, in this track, so I've got my drone, which won't start because I'm mid thing. Uh, I wanted to create like this big kind of uh, this like larger pipe sound, as though like the friends are joining in. So you know, we have the. Oh, that's something I also wanted to mention. The legato on this is so good. <laughs> legato on this is so good that um, you can actually uh, when bagpipers play the play the pipes, they uh, they they often do like this hammer on with their finger, like when they change notes. And the legato is so good, you can actually do that manually, like I did here. If if you see like I do this little this little passing note just before this note hits, it's not even a sixteenth, it's not even a thirty second, it's like a sixty fourth in front of the beat. If you listen, it adds like an ornament. 
Prum. There's another one over here. Which is uh, which I think actually sounds quite realistic. If I take it out, you'll hear the difference. So. And there's quite a few instruments that do that in the ethnic, and they all kind of work, which um, was really handy when I was copying, pasting this around. So anyway, yes. Yeah, so uh, then the track moves on, and I wanted to bring in more pipes, you know, more, a bigger sound. So I bring in the. Uh, let me butcher the name of this. It's actually up here on number one. I already know this one. It's the uh, the <laughs> Ulian, the Ulian pipes. Someone's gonna have a dig at me for getting that wrong, but the Ulian, Ulian pipes, Oulian. No, that's wrong. Ulian pipes. So I bring those in basically as a double, a direct double of the uh, border pipes. Also layered it with whatever's on number five. <laughs> so number five. The soprano recorder, which I believe in this type of music you wouldn't normally get a soprano recorder, but you know, I'm I'm a rebel. I'm breaking all the rules with my recorder. A rebel with a recorder. I'm gonna um, trademark. I'm gonna make T-shirts. Rebel with a recorder. So here we. That's actually a very kind of beautiful kind of... Um... And it's a very beautiful sound. One thing I should mention now, actually, I just heard it very clearly, is that I... I in this, <laughs> Normally with, uh, with tracks like this where they're big and epic, I, I put on a lot of reverb. And I, I don't use the reverb here to put it into a room, per se. I'm using it more as uh, that's as like almost not sound design, but it's like I I want to hear the instrument like that with a really long tail, you know. I mean, if I turn it off, it's still got a good tone, you know. You know, it's got to fit. What was that? Oh, someone will have to tell me in the comments what I just played then. Because it's it it passes. I, I can't. It passes me. I can't think what it is. Anyway, so yeah, I'm, I, I'm using a lot of reverb. It's a very open sound. Um, basically, to simulate like the outdoors. So if you hear lots of tail, I'll. Uh, that's that's what it is. I'll turn it off for now because I know how much you guys hate it. I love it, but you know. Each their own, and and in this, in I'm, I'm going to put it on for now. Um, in the context of this section here, I bring in the the soprano recorder. I was going to use penny whistle, but I wanted to use a few more instruments. So, in this section, like if I take it out, you know, I'll play it with it. I'll take it out. And it's not doing much really but it's it's just adding like a little it's almost like it's adding air into that section like an extra bit of like velvet there's a word velvet <laughs> almost sounds a little bit more militaristic with that with that in there and then uh, so yeah then we have the, this little snare breakdown give the percussionist there moment in the, moment in the sun So as you can hear, I'm I'm bringing back this theme. You can see it here. Da 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 da. da. Copy paste. Um, and I've I've put it on two. Let's take a look. Number two, number two. I'm playing it on the penny whistle. I actually have a penny whistle. 
random story there. But um, yeah, so it's playing up on the penny whistle. And, and I think by default, the penny whistle's on the, uh, the close and surround mic. So you could put it back to the full mix mic. But uh, I thought it sounded cool on the uh, the way it was, you know. Or something similar. Um, let me just take that reverb off. Um, I played that very poorly then, but uh, yeah, so it's got a lovely sound. So basically, I, I repeat the theme that I've established here. But what I wanted to do, because this is over a drone at the beginning, uh, you kind of get in that kind of, uh, you know, you hear the melody. And when you've just got that drone, you, you it's almost like your mind's hearing the harmony that could be there when it's not. And then so basically just to almost like the, the release to the tension of having a drone. The, the whole point of this section here is to just harmonize it how you want it, you know, like, but make it a little bit romantic, a bit emotional, you know, tears were shed. Um, not by me, uh, you know, it, it, I just wanted to make it feel emotional. So I bring in the penny whistle, which is a, a great sound. The penny whistle actually lasts for most of this track. So and I'm also laying, layering it with, uh, with some strings up here. And you guys have heard me bang on about uh, layering, you know, in my videos before. But uh, it's very important, you know, it adds, adds a, a different tone to it. Like, you don't want to just layer things for the sake of it, you know. Some things work better with others. I mean, sometimes you get good thing, uh, good tones. Because these are basically playing in similar registers right now, if I just... Uh... So these two are... I could pull the strings down. Probably would sound crap. You can hear how, um, you know, when you when you change the octave of, of the thing you're layering with the melody, it, it makes it feel either more intense or more somber. So if I have it low, it sounds very somber, like this. If I put it in the mid register, it just sounds very um, sounds very strong, almost like it's a, a confident kind of um, melody. And like you know so it, it, it's very solid and confident was the word i was going for I, the, the the whole thought behind this track was a very kind of militaristic kind of thing you know like brave heart or something along those lines um so yeah very confident and militaristic which you know was what i was going for and if you put it up high it just sounds like intense you know like but i didn't want to climax the track too early so you know you put it in the upper register it's very uh you know very powerful <laughs> So yeah, layering, important kids, don't forget this. So uh, so we have the melody on the penny whistle and then down here on number six, which is uh, the Irish flute, which is a very kind of, it's, it's a nice full bodied low kind of, what's up here? very beautiful kind of uh, low tone so what I do here is basically I bring in a uh, like a counterpoint so if I just uh, I'll play it and then I'll solo out the winds just solo the winds bit of, bit of counterpoint you know in your ethnic brave hearts here we go so so, 
Here we go. Yeah, so just just adding a little bit of a uh, little bit of harmony in there. Personally, I think it sounds better when you have the reverb on, but uh, yeah, I'll know I get crucified for having it on all the time. Oh, and if anybody here is wondering why I've got two EQs, uh, some, sometimes when you put a lot of reverb on, it's basically layering the sound again so you get like these very uh, harsh resonant peaks yeah not not overly in your face it's just if your ears listening out you know after a while your ear picks them up so i just cut them out you know bit of eq little tip there so uh then we move on to uh, the next section so you know if you look so we've just covered this part of the theme and then we have the secondary theme so it's like the the statement and then like the reaction which is like the kind of minor Thing. So we've, we've got a bit of penny whistle. And as you can see here, so we've got the, uh, on number three we have, let me just check, on number three we've got um, the alto flute. So this is technically one of the uh, orchestral-ish uh, instruments. Orchestral, it's an orchestral instrument. So the alto flute, which is it's actually a very nice sound on the flute. And of course, uh, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is that uh, most of these. Uh, instruments have uh, vibrato control which is uh, if you don't know what vibrato is I'm surprised you're watching this video but vibrato is essentially when um, they waver waver and they kind of wobble the note at the end so and with that it's a very kind of sustainy you know very kind of solid tone and vibrato makes it a little bit more, uh, not whimsical, but a little bit more, uh, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'll go with whimsical. It makes it a little bit more, no, nope, I'm gonna go with whimsical. My English fails me recently. CC1 mod wheel is uh, on the dynamics, so mod wheel down, mod wheel up, mod wheel down. So yeah, just uh, I threw this in there just to show that it doesn't have to be all ethnic, you know. You can you can layer anything it's all about the sound of the instruments but uh, anyway as i was saying so uh, we've had the penny whistle doing the theme up to this part and then we move into this section so at the beginning of it i layer it with the uh, the alto flute and then the alto flute takes over but not playing uh, the rest of the melody like you can see here it starts playing a counterpoint so i basically introduce it and then it goes off and does its thing just so that you know you haven't got this new sound just starting out of the blue kind of thing um, and i'm also doubling it with what's on number seven what's behind door number seven let's take a look number seven we have nothing <laughs> so uh, a fail on my part there there's no number seven so that's actually just a random it's a rogue piece of material there to make me look like an idiot um, so yeah, then we bring in uh, back. We bring back the soprano uh, recorder here. So yeah, uh, uh, 
basically just wanted to change the tone around a little bit, you know, uh, play it around the, the different instruments, give it a little bit, make it a bit more interesting. To, like one of the things I'm particularly guilty of and that, you know, many people, uh, you know, do quite often is they'll have a melody like I've got here and they'll just play it on one instrument, you know, they'll play it on the French horn, which I'm guilty of, you know, they'll just play the whole melody on the French horn or they'll play it on strings or something. But it gets, things get a little bit more interesting when you start moving it around the sections. Like for example, this part is by one instrument and then this part is by another. L listen how the, the change in tone just keeps it, keeps it fresh. Keeps it fresh. So yeah, that, you know, just keep keeping it real, keeping it fresh. Um, one of the things I was I was layering this up with uh, a bit of counterpoint on the on the choirs and on the second violin up here. Uh, for, for, by the way, for, for most of it, the uh, the the first strings are doubling for the whole melody. But um, like I was mentioning earlier, so we start the uh, we start the melody here, like where it's up in the mid register. You know, which I, I described as like solid and confident. But then as it goes into the minor part, I actually kind of let the uh, the natural flow, because it would have looked like this if I had just copied and pasted it. You know, it would have gone up into the uh, the top register and then come back down. But by just dropping it an octave, it starts where the first uh, part of the melody ends. And then it kind of descends down and makes it feel a little bit more somber. I mean, if you take, a, I'll just solo the strings. Just take a, a listen to this. Like, uh, so confident. And then it goes down to samba. So as you can hear, you know, just by just by changing the octaves of things uh, with intent. I mean, sometimes it can be a happy accident, but if you if you're changing things around with intent, you know, it's uh, it's all gravy. So yeah, then we you know got a bit of counterpoint on the uh, on the choir. This actually started off as a brass line, but it sounded better on choir, which sounds like this. By the way, if things sound like ridiculously loud, it's because they're being um, they're being compressed, so <laughs> compressed and limited, so that that when there's less instruments, the things that are there get louder. Whereas when everything's playing together, they all kind of um, you know they they all kind of make sense. So if things pop out, they're not always that loud. So yeah, bit of counterpoint, bit of choir, go on to the soprano recorder, Re recorder. What the hell is a recorder? Um, recorder, and then you know into the next section so this next section it's actually this, like the song actually ended here when i first wrote it and then uh and then i, I went down to get a drink as it, was, as it was exporting and i was playing the tune in my head and i was like it needs a da, 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 da. so i i ran back up cancelled the the rendering and I, I put it in by the way i i had the library for an hour and then i wrote this track in two hours so, so I downloaded it and wrote this within the space of three hours. So if I if I if I fluff up my uh, explanations of anything, that's why you know. So you know, I, I first grabbed a piano and then just played the line I had in my head, which was like this. So as you can hear, that's it's a very kind of simple thing. But the, the reason I wanted it, the reason I left that in and I wanted to show you guys is uh, some people ask, you know, how do you, um, you know, how do you actually write a track? Do you go bar by bar? Do you sketch and do all this? And I'm one of these people that I'll grab an, an instrument. It depends what kind of song it sounds like in my head. Like if it's a theme that sounds like it's going to have like a, a bit of movement to it. You know, normally I'll use a piano and I'll, I'll literally just come in and I'll be like... Uh, and 
and I'll just noodle around, you know, find find what I want, and then I'll plonk that down, and then that way I have something to work off, work off of. Like a lot of people, um, when they, uh, when they, you know, when they're writing or or they're struggling to write, you know, they've got blank page syndrome. One of the things they'll do is they'll just sit there and panic at the blank page. If you put something there, anything, you know, even if it's crap, if you put something in, um, you you start to adapt to what you've written. So you think, oh, that sounds crap. But if I changed this note, it would be easier. And then eventually you start just your, your mind just takes off changing things. And then once you've changed things, then you're inspired. You're like, oh, but this note would sound good if I put this harmonizing it or if I change, you know. So if you're just sitting there with a blank page trying to come up with it bar by bar, you're going to get stuck bar by bar because once you've written one bar, you've then got to write the next bar and then you've got to write the next bar. And, you know, doing it that way just seems a bit weird to me. So what I'll do is I'll I'll, I'll bang it out on the piano and then I've got a, a base. I've got like a, a foundation to just build on. Because, like I say, your mind just takes over and you start, you know, taking things out, putting things in um, until you end up with a track. I mean, like, for example, you know, the piano sounded like this when it started. And that section alone turned into... You know, so it's it's easy because like just having those chords and that melody there, I knew what I wanted to do. And, you know, like it, even things like uh, counterpoints and all sorts come from just those chords. So, you know, the melody and the chords were playing this. And then if you listen on the second strings, I have like this rising thing. And that all comes from those one chords. So anyway. Back to wins. Get your head back in the game. Okay, so wins. Uh, where are we? So I bring in the uh, the melody in two different directions. This is, uh, I, I'm not sure how you call it, but it's, it's basically opposite movement in melodies. So as you can see here, um, let me just zoom in here. Uh, I've got the melody, it goes, da, da, da. And then down here, it goes, da, da, da. They both end up in the... Uh, it, they, they both end up like roughly around the same place, but it sounds like this. I mean, they're layering each other, but just having them come in in different angles. Just just adds a little bit of uh, interest. So we've got up here, uh, this this is the return of the uh, the horns, the horns of the uh, bagpipes. Ulian. I did. I didn't want to put the drone in because it would have um, just clashed with everything. So I left that out. And we're layering that with the. Um, that's the the flute, right? Isn't it? Is it not? I don't know why I'm asking. It's not that like you guys can tell me. You can tell me in the comments. Is it? No, it's the Irish flute. So then, so I'm layering. Uh, it, it's a direct layering. So I'm layering the uh, the pipes with the the Irish flute. Again, it's hard to hear um, what adding a flute to a bagpipe does, but it just adds an air. So that's what we're doing with the winds there. And then we've got this, uh, uh, the, the soprano recorder again. play that on the winds so it's not so in your face uh basically just doing a little bit of counterpoint counterpoint everywhere normally my counterpoints it's like uh if one phrase has a has a pause you know um so like here duh, duh. so I, I say so so much so the, <laughs> what i've got here i'm trying to do it without saying so what I've got here is uh, the rhythm. I basically, whenever there's a lot of movement going on and I've got a counterpoint, I'll try and move uh, if I have to 
like if I feel that the line needs movement, I'll, I'll keep it in the same time. So, you know, duh, duh, that's that rhythm's the same there. And then we have uh, the pause, you know, duh, duh, duh. And whenever there's a long sustained note, like we have here, you can see that that's one, uh, I think it's an eighth note. No, it isn't. It's, it's two quarter notes. So what I do is I uh, basically split it up here. <laughs> that, that's one of the, the things I, uh, you do with counterpoint is when one thing sustains, that's when you go noodling on the other. So if you listen to when this is, there should be movement on the other instrument. And then sustain to the end so that you can have a build up, which I think I've actually got counterpoint on the brass over here. Do you get many French horns in Celtic music? I don't know. Maybe I'm the first. I'm like a pioneer. I'm a pioneer for the Celtic nation. Celtic's not a nation. You know what I mean. Anyway, so uh, so a little bit of counterpoint on the uh, old thingy jigs here. A bit more choir. <laughs> this choir sounds shit by itself. I'm almost ashamed at how bad this sounds, but in context it worked. That's one of the things I like about um, layering instruments. You know, they can always sound, normally they even sound better when they're a little bit scrappy. You know, if you keep things a little bit scrappy, there's a little bit of, uh, it sounds less mechanical. That's why I normally, like my quantize is always, it only if, I only ever quantize by 73%. So that means if something's like, you know, wildly off like this and I, I hit it, well, wrong direction, but, and I hit it, it'll, do it but it not quite on the beat you know it'll just just a little bit off well at least it should be as you can see look you see it didn't quantize it directly on the beat and so it just adds that little bit of you know a little bit of movement a little bit of realism not the realism is what i'm going for um so yeah we've we've got some the counterpoints on the strings doing the doing their things with the brass which sounds like this And then so th th this little section here is uh, basically my, I guess what you could call like a farewell kind of melody. It's melody that doesn't exist anywhere else. And it's it's basically the, the, the music saying goodbye. You know, one, one thing that a lot of people miss and I hear a lot, uh, you know, is the ending of a song is almost as important, if not more so than some of the big parts in the middle. Uh, because, you know, if people listen to it all the way through, that's the last thing they're going to hear. That's going to be the memory. And a lot of people just have this thing where they'll just cut mid-bar, you know, when it doesn't make sense. You know, the track hasn't come to its conclusion. They'll just have this big epic section and then go, dum, ended. So what I wanted to do with this, you know, just have a little, uh, have a little quiet section. Basically, the track just saying goodbye. You know, so it, you know, uh, musically it reaches its its destination. You know, this whole track's leading up to this this thing, and this is, like I say, this is like the call. This is like the da 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 da. And we're doing that on the uh, on the alto flute, I believe. Just check that. Yeah, the alto flute, true legato. And then a little bit of uh, a, count, a counterpoint, a little bit of a harmonization between that and the uh, soprano recorder. 
that's actually uh, this little da da is basically just doubling the uh, it's like a almost like an echo of the the farewell theme So yeah, then that that leads us to the end of the track. Um, I, I quite like that track. You know, it was a very kind of epic, heroic at the end. So things to take from this are, um, you know, dissecting the track. So you know, I, I mixed up both uh, the ethnic instruments, you know, with some of the um, more regular ones, and I also dove into the things that you wouldn't expect to hear. You know, like soprano recorder. And one of the important things is layering, you know, no matter. OK, sometimes you can solo instruments like this, you know, if it calls for it. But layering of things is very important. And one of the things I found about Cinewinds Pro that I quite like is particularly like I showed at the beginning when I'm layering uh, like the recorder with the uh, with the the horn, yeah, not horns, the bagpipes. You know, it just it just adds an air. So let's let's imagine that, you know, I wasn't doing a demo for the winds here and I'd actually written this string line as a string line, you know. Right. Ignore that for a second. Just need to uh, put the expression up. And there's a whole pedal up here. Um, so yeah, as you, you know, as you can hear, the, uh, I don't know why that's even holding, the, uh, if, if I'd have written this track as a string track, you know, so I've got the, like this theme, you know, da da da. You know, it sounds pretty, it sounds all whimsical and all that, but it's, it's a little bit, um, th this is more going into MIDI orchestration than, you know, things you would need for your love life. But, uh, you know, la layering adds, an extra air. So if it was just that string thing, you know, it'd sound all right, you know, all good. But when you bring in um, a wind, just to layer that line, it, it adds like a whole dimension, like a, a depth to, to the line, you know, listen. And layering is all about what you want to say, like, that's one of the principles of music that a lot of people seem to miss and I miss all the time when I'm not actively thinking about it is it's sometimes it's not what you're saying you know it's how you're saying it and layering is a way of portraying what you want to say because if you know I've got like that on the winds you know it sounds all whimsical and it puts you in a certain place you know if I was to put that on the uh, on the old brass here yeah. changes it changes the like the context the meaning of what i'm saying with that line it's it's like if if you said um <laughs> i'm gonna kill you you would know by the tone of my voice that i'm joking even though i'm saying i'm going to kill you if i go oh, i'm gonna kill you you know it's a joke you could tell we're humans we're trained to understand the differences in the way something said if i go i'm gonna fucking kill you you know that i'm angry and i'm actually going to stab a butter knife through your eye socket you know you can tell the difference that's that's one of the joys of being you know a human we can tell the difference between the intent of how something's being said and like uh and that's one thing that comes with layering it's it's basically telling the audience what this line means like 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 i'll say like one more time so i mean do you guys get what i'm saying there you know leave, leave in the in the message comments and things just Tell me, I have no idea what I'm saying. So, so yeah, there's the track. So let's take a look at the library. You know, where I don't know how long in we are. Probably an hour or so in already. So let's let's take a listen. So we had a listen to these, you know, these instruments that we got loaded up here. So the penny whistle we listened to. We listened to the flute, border pipes, soprano recorder. You know, all, all these good things. 
So let's load up my little quick menu. If you don't do this, by the way, if you have context and you don't have a quick load bar, go do one now. It's easy. So you come up here to, you know, the quick button. You click it, right? And normally it'll be empty. It'll look like this. And most people don't know. So what you do is you click on instrument. You go to your, uh, you know, you go to your sample drive and just drag the folder in. Just drag it here, drop it, and it will, it will load up you know so if i like, all my cine samples ones are here my cine winds are here and it's th this is useful because like most people will load their instruments from the load bar but if it's not a contact powered instrument most people will go file load and then they'll go it, it normally starts them at some obscure folder you know that's in their like documents folder or it's in like c system 32 you know it always seems to load in some obscure file. Whereas if you load the quick bar, you're instantly there. And it's as good as having these here, you know. And when you turn it away, you've got your keyboard. So always a click away. Always the easiest thing to do. So, yeah. So, CineWinds Pro. Let's have a look. Just compare it to Core. So, the Core ones, you know, you get Piccolo, Flute, Oboe, Clarinet, and Bassoon. And in Pro, you get Alto Flute, Bass Flute, English Horn, E-flat Clarinet, Bass Clarinet, Contra Bassoon. Irish flute, penny whistle, soprano recorder, tenor recorder, renaissance flute, baroque flute, soprano, shawman, shawm, a W, R, an M after a W, shawm, shum, anyway, border pipes, renaissance pipes, ulian pipes, duduk, Irish flute phrases, uh, yeah, and then you get the phrases at the end. So, as you can tell, you're getting a lot of content here. So let's, let's go through some, shall we? Let's go on this track seven, which didn't have anything in it. It was a liar. So you heard the um, you heard the alto flute. So let's load up the uh, the bass flute. Uh, one thing I didn't mention uh, is that I I in this track I used uh, the true legatos because it was a very kind of legato ish track. You know, it had lots of uh, melodies and stuff. But each of these instruments that has articulations has um, the. Oh, that's one thing I noticed. I'll, I'll mention this now: is that some of the patches have a lot of hiss, particularly the low instruments. As you can hear, like there's a hiss buildup. And so, you know, some of you who haven't seen the videos, the articulation patches in uh, Cine Winds and the same with Cine Brass is uh, basically the uh, the the articulation that you're getting is dependent on the velocity. I mean, you could change it, you know to the key switch so they've recorded like an eighth note which is between velocities 179 a short note which is between 80 and 114 let's see how it goes and then a half note which is on the hard velocity so you can go ba 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 and then when you hold down the, uh, the the sustain pedal, which I'm doing now, you can't see it, but I promise I'm holding it down. You know, so then it switches over to true legato. And of course, you could change that to velocity, yeah, the, the velocity inverted. So, you know, the the longer ones are on the the soft, uh, the longer note is on the soft velocity, and the short note is on the hard. Uh, you can have a key switch. So these key switches, you know, uh, relate to the articulation. Same again, MIDI CC. So uh, CC three in a certain position. So say you've got mod wheel. If this was on CC one, mod wheel down would be legato mod wheel quarter-ish of the way up and then like three quarters of the way and then like right at the top it would be half and then custom map you can do it however you like have it your own way you know it's like burger king is it burger king have it your own way i don't know i, I anyway <laughs> i i digress so yeah uh same as all the other uh uh cine cine libraries the cine samples libraries uh they, they have like this interface so you get your mic positions here so each instrument's being recorded in a different with with different mics and then uh you can choose which ones you want so if i want just the close mic i can turn that on 
turn off the form. <laughs> automatically loads and loads it into the the ram for you or if you're feeling adventurous you can layer them up if you're feeling like it's got too much mid you know you could whack on the eq So, uh, you know, settings, settings panel, you know, you've got your uh, speed of the legato and you can turn the legato on and off. So if you turn the legato off, it basically just becomes a sustain patch where you can play chords, you know. Uh, so polyphonic legato. Cine samples have this uh, this system, like polyphonic legato, which means if you play two legato lines at once, if, if you just play one line, it will pick up that you're just playing one line. So if I was to go like, uh, and then hit that hit that lower note there, it would it would assume that it's part of the money. The mon uh, like a monophonic legato patch, but when you've got poly uh, put on, if you start two lines at once, it will then have two legato transitions going on at once. Which is a very good thing, or you can just put it on mo mono. So if I hit two notes at the same time, you know, it'll choose. It'll just pick whichever one I push last. But polyphonic legato's all good. And then you've got all your effects here, you know, if you wanted some stereo width, whack that up. create some weird textures and the like so then we've got the uh, the english horn which i believe wasn't made in england i believe that's a false name the same as the french horn i don't think was made in france these these music instrument makers were the trolls of their day Turn that reverb off for all of you, you haters out there. Nice, uh, nice short notes. Again, uh, there's quite a bit of hiss there, so I'm wondering if they can take a look into that in the. Uh, Hopefully the updates in the future. So this has got a lovely tone to it. I've always liked the English horn. Again, it's got the uh, what, what, what do you call it? What do you call it? Uh, what am I looking for? What am I looking for? Vibrato control. Let's say on CC two. And as you can see, each um, each uh, instrument has its own mapping panel. So, if whenever you load up like a Cine samples one, it's always good to just check the mapping to see what extra things are, are, are within it. So, what does what does this do? Pedal, trill. <laughs> uh, 
That's interesting. So when I've got the pedal down, it's legato. And when I lift the pedal up, it'll go into a, a half step trill. <laughs> if you wanted to create, you know, some interesting, uh, interesting things. And it's got whole step uh, trills, which sound like Epic trills. Um, so yeah, we've got so we've got some English horn there. Sounds beautiful. Uh, clarinet. You see, before before the sinner wins, not sinny wins, as I've been saying so far. Um, I wasn't much of a clarinet user, but since since I start, you know, since I did the last demo, the range of them. So the the, the E flat clarinet, I believe, goes higher. Again, it's got the uh, it's got the the short notes on the, the slow velocity, and then the, the longer ones on hard. And then if I hold down the sustain pedal. Oh, expression, by the way, controls the uh, the volume. All the way down is off. So if you decide that, one thing I always do is that a lot of people will have, um, they'll start and they'll go. And they'll be like, this is too loud for my music. How dare you, Cine Samples? How dare you? Um, how dare you make it loud for my music? All you have to do is just pull down that expression dial to, to the acceptable level. And then the high velocities kind of fit in. But yeah, so that's that's a nice thing to have. And um, the reason I, I started like in the clarinet is clarinet for whatever reason works really well in reverb. So beautiful. Uh, again, with all the mappings the same, you know, if I wanted the the whole step trills, I can whack it on my pedal. <laughs> I don't know why that's comical to me. Um, anyway, <laughs> so the bass clarinet. By the way, I, I'm skipping the true legatos because if I push the pedal down on an articulations patch, it becomes a true legato patch. Let me turn that reverb off. So this is quite... The bass clarinet is actually really cool. It's very aggressive. I swear I just heard someone clicking. Did you hear that? God, maybe I'm going insane. I thought I heard someone clicking a mouse in the sample. I heard it. Anyway, a little oversight there. So yeah, it's got a beautiful sound, this one. kind of sinister tone. Dum, dum, dum. Uh, the mapping, we'll give it a, car, a go with the, the whole step trills. sound 
So we, oh, then we got the, uh, the contrabassoon. I said with an, an S, the contrabassoon. These, uh, again, as I've been saying with everyone, well, these ones don't have the, the trills, but the short notes are controlled by velocity. And then pedal down. So that's uh, with the breath control down. And with it up. So we've done the Irish flute, the whistle, soprano recorder, tenor recorder. I don't think we've covered this. So they, those those instruments I just showed were the uh, you know the orchestral ones. Now we've got like the Ooh, too high. So again, velocity on the on the thingamajig. Oh, we got trills. We got trills. Pedal. <laughs> I'm just going to catch you. I'm going to play a beautiful melody, and I'll I'll whack in a trill. sudden trills um, again so one of the things I didn't mention in the other ones is most of these do have um, you know most of the ones I, I showed in the track I don't think the Uleum pipes do so they have the ornamented sustains uh, yes yeah, so things like the penny whistle which are on which is on number two have the, the short notes the articulation the articulations patches <laughs> The action on my keyboard is very loud. I apologise. Uh, the alto flute, you know, we, we showed we showed this. We showed this. It's all good. Um, the border pipes, again, has ornamented uh, sustains. The soprano recorder has the short notes. Irish flute has the short notes. Tenor recorder, which we're listening to right now. Right now. Number seven. Sounds like this. <laughs> Beautiful tenor recorder, uh, Renaissance flute. This is a, a, a basically a flute with a cool tone. at the end there. Maybe not, that might have just be me. Uh, Baroque flute. Baroque. Just 
take off the quick so I can see the keyboard. Again with the short notes. I'm going to say again with the short notes on everything. So this one's got something called the short turn. Short turn, let's put it when the pedal's off. It's got that, so if I've got the pedal down. That would probably be better on the key switch. Uh, so I'll just disable that for now. So short turn is just like a little blah, 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 before the newt. Soprano shawm. What does this sound like? Jesus. Okay. Um. It's it's kind of reminiscent of like the uh, the horns in a way. Not oh, I keep calling them horns. Uh, the bagpipes. It's got that kind of vibe. sound uh, the mapping so again short notes yeah 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 border pipes we've done renaissance pipes we've done baroque flute done soprano shawm done I'm, I'm getting myself confused renaissance pipes we haven't done those so these ones I think are in a different key. <laughs> I played my own thing wrong. I played my own thing wrong. Oh, wait, let me turn it down. Beautiful kind of ambience to them. You know, if you throw them in reverb, though, they become otherworldly. <laughs> My reverbs tend to go on forever. I think that's why people hate them, because they're too in your face. In your face! And then the Daduk. Let's take a listen to the Daduk. <laughs> So let's take a look at the mapping first. So, oh geez. So short is on, oh, is on C0. Um, my keyboard needs, C0 is all just out of reach for me. There we go. Sound almost like pan pipes like that. And then legato is on F0. But the sustains are ornamented, so between 1 and 60 is... And then up near the top. <laughs> I can never get it.
kind of airy, you know, full of air. So then we come on to the, the phrases. And the phrases are good if, like, you've done a drone and you're not fully sure what the, the instrument's supposed to be played like. You know, you can always just whack on a, uh, a nice phrase. These ones are recorded in E, I believe. kind of uh, almost like inspirational tools or if you're like a TV composer or something and you've got 20 minutes to, to score four weeks worth of TV show you know you could just drone and then hit some of those things the renaissance flutes I probably should have listened to this before I used the renaissance stuff but uh but I didn't because I'm a noob You get the idea there. The Shawm. Oh, that bloody Shawm's back to haunt me. Right, let's have a listen. Jesus. So loud. <laughs> kind of cool. Border pipe phrases. As you can hear, like, in that phrase, I was talking about how, right at the beginning... How, uh, if you're still watching, by the way, well done. But at the beginning, I was talking about how it like hammers on some of the notes. You can actually hear that like in this one. It's kind of like that. Dilla, dilla, dilla. Like I say, these are brilliant for like inspirational kind of um, like if you need to, like if you don't know what you want to write, but you've got like a drone, you can just bung some of these in. Pipes are so in your face. I love it. The Ulian. I need to turn these down. <laughs> also, it gives you, um, like, if, if, even if you're not going to rip off, not rip off, but even if you're not going to use the, uh, the phrases in a track, it, it's always good if you're not sure about the instrument is to listen to how it's, uh, in air brackets supposed to be played and these are good for that you know because you can load one up and take a listen to what it would sound like if it was played in real life because then that's what people are going to expect Duke is such a sad instrument. <laughs> like that. And then we're back to the beginning. We're back to the beginning already. Back to the alto flute. So yeah, that is uh, that's pretty much. Oh, where'd it go? That's pretty much everything in Cinewin's core. Not core. Uh, Cinewin's pro. So most of the instruments, like we mentioned at the beginning. Everything's got a really cool tone to it, which is the first thing I always look for in a library is the tone. How does it sound? You know, how it plays and all that comes later. How does it sound? And again, like uh, like they did with Cine Winds Court, it sounds fantastic. You know, there were a few patches that had some air in it, uh, like some hiss. 
but they managed to cut that out of the uh, the piano and things like that. So, you know, if it becomes if more people are concerned about it, I, I'm sure they'll figure a way to to tone that down a bit. But it it didn't distract, you know, because when you put it in reverb and things, and in the context of a mix, it just completely disappears anyway. But yeah, the, the sound of it is like Cinewind's core. It's just got that kind of cool sound, and the fact that it has the uh, the polyphonic. Um, legato so they're all solo instruments so say you wanted like a an alto flute section you know you just make sure that you're um, on the polyphonic legato and then um, you know you could play play chords to your heart's content So with the polyphonic legato, which I'm not sure everybody does yet, but polyphonic legato is very powerful when you've got solo instruments. So, you know, a lot of people were worried that single solo instruments, you know, wouldn't work in context if you wanted chords. But because you've got polyphonic legato, it's perfectly passable and sounds good. So, um, you know, so all, oh, I forgot what I was talking about, but all the instruments, you know, I've got like these. Uh, so you've got like your your short notes, you know, your, your legatos and stuff. And how that was it how it sounds the, the the legatos in in the cine um cine samples instruments the legato of it just to me personally sounds fantastic like particularly like their brass range that the legato was good in in the winds it's carried over and it's hard to it's hard to kind of stress how like excited i <laughs> excited is that the word okay we'll go with excited excited i am that they've brought um like modern techniques to sample it of sampling you know with like round robin and legato to, to ethnic instruments because there's not much of that around so having that as extra like colors and sounds to throw into your tracks you know like th like uh, like how i threw in the soprano recorder which wouldn't technically be in celtic kind of music you know i threw that in as an extra layer but it works because they've all just kind of they're all well recorded and they all work together so you know there's nothing stopping you throwing in a penny whistle in an epic track if you can make it fit but like, like I was mentioning with layer, it's all about how you're saying. So, you know, if you want a kind of soft tone, you know, just whack in a penny whistle or a recorder. It's a little bit different. Not everyone's doing it. And we're all trying to be different. Um, so, yeah, again, it's all recorded at the MGM scoring stage. So it's all got that built in kind of uh, that nice ambiance to it. And you can always change if you've got surround sound, you know, whack on the surround mics, room mics. So the sound of it is perfect. Then you move on. The next most important thing is how well does it actually work? And like, like th this is one of the most, like the, the winds, like the winds before it as well, were some of the most like playable winds I've ever had, you know, like particularly the flute. because it sounds like kind of realistic when you're playing it plays well you know all the scripting's tight and you know everything sounds good it it inspires you with the line you know because it actually sounds as though you've got a player sitting next to you playing and when that happens you know like if it was all disjointed when it uh can i turn that off let me let me show you if i like turned it off and i was going You know, when, you, when you're doing that, you, you don't get a sense of the line. But when you've got like a well-programmed Lego, you f it f it's hard to explain, but it feels like a real instrument to play, even though you're playing the keyboard. But you know what I mean. You guys know what I mean by now. I'm rambling, but it's because I, 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 I know what I want to say. It's just my mouth doesn't know what my brain wants to wants to do right now. Um. So yeah, once once you've got the sound and how it plays, it comes down to like quantity, quality, and you know pricing. I I, I should have looked what the price was, but um, if it's if it's anything relative to what the Cinewinds core was, um, the amount of content you're you're getting in Pro is is staggering. I mean, like I'm surprised they didn't release the ethnic instruments as a separate thing because I imagine people would have bought it as a separate thing because there's enough content. Like there's enough content with just the orchestral instruments for it to be Cinewinds Pro. 
but then all the extra um, ethnic things, which I personally love, which is why I did my based my track on it. Uh, the you know the ethnic things are, are, are stunning, you know. So all in all, you know, I'm I'm really excited about this library. You know, I I plan to use it a lot more, particularly the uh, the ethnic things, because ethnic to to most listeners is just ethnic. You know, I could probably slip in some penny whistle into some Middle Eastern things, and so long as I'm playing a Middle Eastern thing, most people. I mean, you could like. The people watching this would know, you know, composers would spot it. But most ordinary people, they're not anoraks or geeks like us. You know, you could get away with those ethnic instruments crossing borders. It's because it's not always the tone of them that gives it away. It's it's how it's played and the 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 modes and keys it's in so yeah i you know it's a fantastic library with with plenty of content what more do you what, what do you want from me what do you want from me it's it's, it's a great library um and it definitely it definitely sticks into your cine wins your, your cine samples uh collection you know like it fits well with the brass like i like i showed in the uh you know when you've got like this section here it all layers up well you know Bit of a big section. And one thing that I like, um, just before I go, one thing that I've noticed so far is that because they've been recording all these, um, all of these instruments, you know, cine winds and cine brass so far, at the Sony scoring stage in the correct position, is that they've all started to um, set like the more I'm using cine winds with cine brass, the 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 whole track starting to sound more uniform, like almost as if it's all being recorded in the Sony scoring stage. So you know, if along the line we get like some cine strings or some more cine percussion or what else is there? Like well, we've got that. That's pretty much it. Cine strings and cine percussion. If we get those recorded at Sony. You, so you have your cine orchestra all recorded at Sony. It should all start to fit like like a like a glove, like a glove. So yeah, um, I'm hoping I'm hoping we get some more cine samples at the MGM scoring stage at Sony. So yeah, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this little uh, video. I say little, we must be like four hours long now. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and you know listening to me ramble about layering and counterpoint and all that um jazz you know and I, I i i genuinely want to hear what you guys think so leave me a comment you know and i I will reply if you know if you've got a question i will reply to it um you know and what do you think about the library you know start a discussion what what do you guys think i mean it's it's not about me to you know for me to tell you what what to think you know i, I show you what i think and i want to hear what you've got to say so i uh, hope you've enjoyed this t uh, this video today um if not you know, thanks for watching the whole thing anyway. Um, sorry for wasting your time. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And I shall see you all again in the next video. Thanks again and bye bye.